This week on the Fifth Trooper podcast. Yeah. I hit all six on Vader, and he rolled the three extra for the Pierce three yeah. that Vader has, and he rolled like all of them paint. <laughs> I remember playing, I heard this guy go, yes, yes, <laughs> nine of paint. Welcome to the Fifth Trooper podcast. Hello and welcome back to the 5th Trooper Podcast. In this series, we talk all things Star Wars Legion. My name is Jay Shalansky, and joining me today is not Nick. Uh, apparently he couldn't make it, and so I got this bum off the street. <laughs> Tough luck, sucker. <laughs> Evan Bolris, you guys probably know him if you've listened to the podcast. He's been on twice now. This is his third appearance. And final maybe depending on how he does today we're doing open fair. tryouts fair all right all right let's see if you make the team buddy put me in coach so uh for today we're gonna talk uh evan and i and nick actually went to a tournament out in uh, buffalo new york this weekend and we're gonna talk about that uh we're gonna talk a little bit about any uh future ones that we're looking at going to uh pax and lvo and then also we want to kind of talk about terrain, you know, what we saw at the tournament and then also, you know, what we're seeing out there and about. So I guess uh, first off, um, just want to have an open discussion about the tournament we had this weekend. So, you know, just uh, kind of spoil alert here going into the podcast, but Evan actually got first place. Yeah, I got, yeah, I got really lucky. I'm good dice. Yeah. What yeah, are you going yeah. to do? That's uh, what they always say. Uh, them, well, them winners. I uh I think it was mostly uh I ran um uh, I ran Veers, I ran Vader, I ran Boba Fett, and then five troops of stormtroopers with just the DLT, and then uh Vader had uh saber throw and force reflexes, uh Boba had Hunter and uh, Veers had a steamed leader. And I think uh I really liked it actually. I was the first time I played it. Um I thought I was gonna do really bad, but uh you know, DLTs seem like one of the best troop upgrades in the game, maybe? Uh, yeah. One to four, two red dice, surge, so they only have a one chance to miss, one out of eight. Um, and Boba Fett, like, what, first game, I had him in. The first time I ever played him, he didn't do much for me. I'm like, oh, man, what a what a huge waste of points. And then <laughs> the next two games he won it for me, uh, I actually won via bounty. Um, yeah. That was a real close game. Uh, actually, all my games were super close. And uh, I had a lot of fun. Everybody was a blast to play with. Yeah. Um, no complaints there. I thought the, uh, we'll get into it later, but the train looked great. Yeah. Um, especially we didn't realize how many people are coming. So they had to like last minute, like just get some stuff together so we can play. Yeah. I mean, you know, so overall uh, from the tournament, we had 12 participants, which was just. That was great. It was amazing. Yeah. That was the most I've ever had for Legion. Yeah. And I think like a lot of, some, from what I've been seeing, like I think PAX Unplug, what was it, 12 or 16? 16 yeah. So like we're really close to some of the maxes that these big tournaments are doing, which was amazing. Um, it was 10 bucks entry fee, which I thought was reasonable. Yeah. Um, they actually gave out cash prize for first and second place, which was amazing. Yeah. That was really cool, actually. I wasn't ready for that. Uh, and so when I got it, I just bought a whole dinner. Uh, cause I didn't yeah. know what to, do. I mean, money's money, right? But I was just like, well, I guess I'll just give it back. Yeah. Uh, Evan was so shocked. He just bought me dinner. He was like, I, I guess, I guess I'll buy you a burger, buddy. I guess, yeah, I guess I, I owe you a burger. I've never there. had this mustache before. <laughs> More or less. We used like store credit or like nothing. Right. Yeah. Usually my career and X-Wing has been built on losing, not winning. So yeah. I'm like, what's the prize for last place, guys? Yeah, he looks so shocked when he, when, <laughs> when they announced his, he didn't even talk for 10 minutes. We had to like shake him. He was, <laughs> I, I never, I never win. I just never win. Like, uh. <laughs> So that was really cool. But no, great time. Um, the list was pretty fun. Um, I like it because my command hand was just like a menagerie of like whatever I wanted it to be. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I took for Vader was Master of Evil. The only thing I took for uh, Veers was maximum firepower. And I took two generics and then two Boba Fett cards. And yeah, and I think that gives you a lot of options, right? Oh, it's great. Like, you know? Veers, if you kill him, whatever. The first turn, right. I'm using maximum firepower to hit something. Yeah. Uh, I was using it to try to get snipers. Uh, one time I, he put him out and we set up and I put Veers down and I'm like, you know, just aiming, right? Veers yep. had to like just seize him right there. And I'm like, all right, they're gone. And he's like, oh wait, scout too. And he was in some trees. I'm like, bah, <laughs> no, no, you know, so I like, yeah, I threw into an ATRT or something. But well, one of the fun things I like, you know, with Veers is that, uh, a lot of people, when you play that maximum firepower and turn one, which I, I understand the, the argument out there that you could hold it. I've, yeah. I've held it before. Yeah. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. 
but they expect you to activate him first too. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm just giving him an order token. I'm going to see how this plays out yeah. and then I'll activate him. You know, because sometimes like with their, you know, in anticipation of that, I've noticed some players will start hiding stuff. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, he's going to. And then it's like, no, I'm going to I'm going to make you activate the troops I want to shoot first and see what you're going to do. And then I'll and then I'll roll maximum fire. No, that's that's very true. I uh, first game, I didn't get to like I shot at something like an ATRT. Second game, I shot at, I don't know, another eight. No, something. And then the third game, like I'm like he. Everything else was hit, so I'm like I'll just fire at troops. Yeah, got one hit. And I'm like oh, <laughs> it's just like you dodge everything else. I'm like oh whoops, but yeah, uh, but I mean overall, fun. yeah, that they uh, so they did cash for first and second, and then basically all the all the rest of us losers after that. If you're not first, you're last, Ricky Bobby, as my <laughs> as my old father used to say. Uh, beyond that, they actually uh, they had this guy uh, Corey Budwine. He does command decks on Etsy. If you just search up command decks on Etsy, you'll find him. So he does the laser cut uh, wood MDF card holders yeah. for x-wing for legion and i believe some other games I, yeah. I don't know off the top of my head but you they can check great. it out they yeah awesome so he gave so you could pick two of those as like i think what did they say after it sixth and below I think so uh, uh all got to pick those and they had they had some 3d printed terrain as the giveaways and then they had uh what was it like paint holder or something yeah. like that as well you know and that's so so really i just want to say thanks uh that was dave and adam's card world out in buffalo that yeah. store is bonkers yeah it's really crazy big it was huge i mean they had so much stuff so like you know for people who are just listening never been there before i I assume that's a lot of people because it's buffalo new york but like 50 percent of it was like sports Mm -hmm. stuff you know we have a nfl team in buffalo and there's a a, an nhl team both in buffalo so like you know they had a lot of buffalo bills stuff a lot of buffalo saber stuff like uh, couches and stuff to watch the games up front. Then as you went back, it kind of got nerdier. You know, you start getting yeah. into video games and yeah. then collectibles. They had this huge uh, video wall in the back that had you could like. So let's say let's say you had a buy, which we didn't. Um, you know, fortunately we yeah. didn't have to do that. We had twelve. But if you had a buy, you could just go play Fortnite. Yeah. Up on the video wall, they had like an arcade there. That was really cool. They're yeah. Crazy, crazy they're amount like, of stuff. Uh, they're like a big competitor to TCG player. Yeah. How the amount, the amount of cards they just like oh, buy yeah. and sell. That's, it's really they nuts. had this ridiculous counter that went through the center of like the nerd section. That I don't know if you remember, but when we were like yeah. trying to leave, I was like, whoa, what? Like, because yeah. it just kept going and going and going oh, and you yeah, couldn't yeah, find yeah. the front door. And it had I was like, like autograph like, memorabilia. Yeah. Like, it was really cool. It's like, how do you get out of here? <laughs> uh, you don't. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> it's, it's not the worst place to get lost in. Yeah. Um, but you know, so, so that was the store we played in. Great game area. I, I mean, it was top notch. Yeah, I think excellent. It was super excellent. Um, and then, you know, I also want to thank uh, Chris and Luke uh, Cook. They're out of Buffalo too. They ran the tournament, um, and I really think Chris and and Luke too. But Chris is very active on all the Facebook groups and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think he's an awesome ambassador for the game and the scene. I mean, he really. No, he had really great energy. Like, it was yeah, really positive. Uh, uh, really great. Like, uh, just communicator no it was great i think he did a really good job yeah and you know evan and i talk about this a lot like how do you build the community how do you make it better and it's it's really it's guys like chris who are enthusiastic who have uh you know personal skills that they can talk to people they get people engaged they get people excited and uh you know, and he uh, he and this guy, Paul, they brought tons of their own personal terrain oh, from yeah. home. No, that was amazing. Was awesome. And we'll that talk about cool. that a little bit later. But yeah, it was it was just really, really good overall. Um, great people. Yeah. Like not as I don't th- there wasn't a single person that I was, you know, no, not at all. too upset but, with. Yeah, yeah, no. You know, I mean, I don't like losing, but like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, other wah, than that. Wah. Yeah, I thought I thought it went really well. Um, so, you know, before we get. Uh, I know you touched on your list a little bit too, but like, um, I'll just talk about what I ran. I I don't remember what place I got into. I can tell you it was, um, it was, uh, it wasn't first or second. And so I, I want to say it was beyond sixth. I don't know where it was. I, I, I won one. Had lost day. Yeah. I lost two, but I lost to the person, the two people that ended up going third and fourth. So when you bring a uh, anti armor list and no armor <laughs> right. shows up in your game. That's that's a bad time. Right? Yeah. So I was running uh, Vader with Force Push and Saber Throw. I was running Veers with uh, uh, improvised orders. I was running one, two, 
three, four stormtroopers, two with DLT 19s, two with HH 12s. And then I was running two snow troopers with uh, flames and grenades. Oh, and they all had, all, all the troopers had impact grenades. It, it did okay, uh, but there was a couple guys that had some armored units, but I, I, didn't, I didn't face them. So all the people that, that got in the top five were all non-armor, all trooper units with um, either scouts or commandos, a lot of snipers. Snipers are very good. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, I was uh, not ready for how many I'd be seeing. Yeah, and that guy, that guy Chris, we were just talking about, uh, he came in third and his son Luke came in second. Um, Chris had a ridiculous uh, rebels list. Um, I think he had he ended up with 10 activations. Um, and even, you know, he had just had so many troops. Um, so, uh, actually Luke told me he had Han Leia, two troops with Z6, two fleets, two full sniper squads. So he had two of the full commando squads, but with the sniper in yeah, them. Okay. And then he had, and then he had just a small sniper squad. It was, it was a ridiculous list. And I was, you know, I've since changed <laughs> this, uh, this tournament really made me adjust my list this week. <laughs> Um, and I got my commandos and Boba Fett open, so I got yeah. them in. But I didn't want to change my list for the tournament because I had been practicing with it, so mm -hmm. I felt pretty confident in it. But yeah, I just I got I got walked over because uh, the two the first two guys I played had zero armor, and the HH twelves just weren't enough. They weren't holding up. Um, they're they're fine, but you know the exhaust and the no movement and it's just. I think they need blast. Yeah, I think they need blast. Same thing with the rebel grenade launcher. Um, I think it just needs blast. So you don't feel like your rebel grenade launcher at least was a red and a black or two red or something. It's yeah, pretty okay. Uh, I don't remember the stats exactly. Uh, but the rocket launcher, like you're, it's you can't shoot and move it or move and shoot it because it's cumbersome. Yep. Uh, it's got to reload it. It's kind of a lot. And uh, with blast, at least you could hit guys in cover. I guess it might be too good, but it's range two to four, so you can't shoot range one with it. I, I don't know. It's yeah. I feel like. I I know uh, Nick. You know Nick said, "Well, of course it'd be better with blast." I'm like, "You're right," but I feel like it needs it to be like unless something else comes out, right? Sure. We haven't seen all the stuff yet, uh, but that's what I thought it did for the longest time because I'm like, "Well, it's a is it a it's a rocket launcher, it's right. It, right?" So rockets and missiles, missiles are supposed to be homing rockets. Yeah, be but it's dumb. got the impact instead of blast because it's meant for the armor troops, yeah. which was you know the list was doing really well when I was facing ATRTs and ATSTs. You need ATST apart, right? Like, yeah, yeah, and uh, but then once I faced these guys, you know, and then. So Chris uh, Cook with that Rebel list, like he tore me apart our first round. It wasn't even close. Like uh, I think we had battle lines, and uh, it was um, sorry, the name is escaping me now, but it's the the one basically where you gotta get all your troops in the enemies uh, breakthrough. Breakthrough. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we had breakthrough, and what had happened was so like on my left hand side of my board, I had blue player, so I got to pick sides. On the left hand side of my board. There was this amazing like castle. Did you play on that yeah, board? Yeah, I did actually. Yeah. yeah. So like there was this amazing castle within my borders, um, uh, within my deployment zone on the left hand side of the board, and I was like, awesome. And so like I just stacked Veers up there in the two HH twelves, yeah. and I was like, I'm just gonna sit here. And so when I started the game, you know, Evan and I were talking about this earlier, but when I started the game, I had all the good intentions in mind. I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep my army together. They're going to just run through his army. Even if he comes across on the right-hand side of the board, if I got everybody on the left, I can start picking him off from there mm -hmm. and then just start moving towards him as a cohesive unit. And then something happens in my head when I'm playing, like, I start seeing what the other players are doing. And instead of being confident in what I'm deploying, like I start questioning. Start second guessing yourself. Yeah, yeah, questioning my tactics. And so Chris was, he saw what I was doing because he's really good. And so he's like, all right, well then I'll just put all my troops on the other end of the board. So when I was in the castle, just like fortified, like tons, tons of cover. Like yeah. I, I would have been safe and sound and yeah. done some damage in there. He just started placing on the other side of the board, and I was like, oh, no, like, I got to adjust. And so, like, I put <laughs> Vader and the Snow Troopers over there and oh, no. uh, one of the DLT-19s yeah. over there, and I was like, well, I'll just, all right, well, I think this should be enough to, to meet him, and yeah. it wasn't. Yeah, because you're um, facing his whole army at that point, not just... Uh, yeah. yeah. And, you know, but in my head, and this is a miscalculation on my, my part, you know, and I'm sure uh, Kyle from Never Tell Me the Odds would... Tell me what an idiot I am because, you know, you always have to 
back up your backup in this game, right? Yeah. Redundancy is key. And I just, I had the idea in my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the, I the just was like, leaving, you're like, oh, Chris is doing something different. I'm yeah, like, I, yeah. I, oh, no. And then I split my army and that was the end of it. But yeah, Chris did a fine job making me look like a fool. He He's an excellent, excellent player. Oh, so you boys are from Syracuse, <laughs> huh? Yeah. We're going to teach you a lesson. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and, and then on top of it, he was, uh, you know, and I don't want to take away. He, he, like I said, he outsmarted me and outplayed me. A hundred percent. But then on top of it, he was rolling like every roll was a, had at least one crit. So it was just like crit, 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 crit. So it didn't matter the cover I had, yeah, like yeah, nothing yeah. mattered. And it like my stuff was just getting shredded. And yeah. uh he just did an excellent, excellent job. Um and then my second game, uh I ended up playing the guy that I think his name was Steve. He ended up going fourth. Okay, yep. And uh, you know, it was a hard fought battle till round six. Um and then he just came in and just, just like he took out Vader. I ended up, I think it was five. He had five hits on Vader. I think Thanks. I had three or four health left on Vader. Yeah. And I was like, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am totally going to do this. I rolled all blanks. Uh, <laughs> and Vader was gone. Those traitorous red dice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was just, but it was a good game and he beat me. And, you know, uh, it did, cut. I felt like, um, it came down. It came all the way down the sixth round. We were tied. Uh, it was the the objective to uh, the transmissions one. Yeah, intercept the transmissions. Intercept the transmissions. So we were tied, going all the way down to to the wire, mm-hmm. and then we were fighting over that middle one. Yeah, Vader died, and that was that was really it for me. I couldn't I couldn't really do anything else. Uh, and he won. He got. He ended up going fourth place, which was really cool. I think cool. I think he lost to you. He. Yep. Yeah. So uh, yeah, his only I loss him, was yeah. first player. Yeah. So, so that was really cool. Um, learned a lot. You know, I think every time, uh, you know, it's hard. And I'm sure a lot of people out there would agree. Like when you're playing with your local people, like Nick and I know each other now. Mm-hmm. So like we trade games because it's like, oh, I know what Nick's going to do here. I, I kind of know Nick's yeah. mind. Um, you know, some of the people we play with, we've played enough where you kind of mm-hmm. you kind of know what they're going to do. You know what list yeah. they're bringing for the most part. So it's really nice when you go out to tournaments because you see completely new stuff that no, you've never seen before. Yeah. yeah. And new styles of play. No, I agree completely. Yeah. It's a uh, it was interesting to see people use like what Nick brought to T47s, <laughs> you know, like that was crazy. Yeah. So so Nick, yeah, so anybody who listens, Nick Nick and I have talked about the T47s forever. He he's basically talked crap about them forever. Yeah. Um, but I think he saw somebody play one, I want to say last Friday or something, and he was like, holy crap, like the way they used it, it was really good. Um, I want to say it was Jeremy. And then, uh, so he was like, you know what? I'm going to, let's see. So he brought the two T47s. Um, I think he went one and two as well. Yeah, I think so too. But he said the T47s worked really well, but then, you know, the rest of his army was a little naked. Um, yeah. I'm sure he'll talk about that on another cast, but yeah. Oh, sure. So he was just trying something new, and it, it seemed, I don't know. I mean, I thought about it, and it's like, uh, so so speeder bikes are scary until there's just one yeah. of the two of them, like, in, but that's, those things are shooting better speeder bike dice, and then they don't really, like, as they take damage, unless you get the really bad, like, lose your main cannon, they don't really get worse, right? So that's, uh, what is it, three red, three black or something, I think? Uh, and with two of those barreling down on you, throwing like 12 dice at you at some, so you could just if i was playing them i'd be like well that's getting evaporated this turn that's getting evaporated this yeah. turn right like i just that's a lot dude nothing stands up to that like especially with like a reroll if you do your compulsory move aim dodge and or aim and shoot or something i think it's even though they get a lot of flack for being the worst unit i, I still don't think they're amazing but i think they have a place for someone who really likes them like yeah and i, I think they're like a uh, um a passion unit yeah, like you yes. just like snow speeder, so you're gonna play it, whether it's good or bad. Yeah, and I just I feel like that, like, and I I know I'm just uh, beating a dead horse here, but like, the, there's got to be a reason they're in the game. Yeah, and we'll find it eventually. Um, but until then, I think I think it's just testing stuff out, and maybe it's maybe it's the same as Vader. You know, for a while nobody was playing Vader because he just you know from a points perspective he just didn't make sense but now that lot. yeah now that we've all learned to, how to play a little bit better and we've seen some different stuff he he's become way more successful it's it's funny because like i'd move him up and he was just there to be a distraction he's a great distraction because yeah. you do you take a dodge 
you get your free force dodge from force reflexes. So you're getting that every turn because you're only taking one force power because you're a master of evil one. And you do your, your one forward, you throw your saber, and everyone shoots at him. And he next turn, he does the same thing. Like, yeah. And if you do master of... Um, Oh, I'm sorry, Master of the Force, that's his free evade. But then you activate him with Master of Evil, take your dodge, get your free dodge, that's three dodges on him. So every time you shoot the next three shots at him, he's getting deflects. Like, yeah. It's pretty scary. Yeah, he's he's really good. Uh, and I've always loved him. And, you know, I until I saw Boba, and, and you can talk about that in a little bit, but, like, until I saw Boba and the, the scouts working... Um, I, I was planning on keeping him in my list. And then after we ran that tournament this weekend, I was like, holy crap. And I've completely retooled my list. And so now I have Veers and Boba. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, three stormtroopers with DLTs, two snow troopers with flame troopers. I have two of the scout units with snipers and then one sniper unit. Yeah. Snipers, man. I wasn't. So I kind of brushed them off the first time I saw them like, yeah, well, they're cool. I don't know. And then, like, everybody I placed had at least one. And one, the second guy I placed, um, really nice dude. It was, like, a second game ever playing. He was just, like, jazzed because he had to he was doing a lot with his house. And he's like, finally come out and get to play. You yeah. Know? And uh, I uh, said, like, I said, Veer's, like, maximum firepower them off the board. And then they, they had Scout 2. And, uh, you know, he, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Like, I, right. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that is right. They do. Um, but they killed Veer's and they picked up Vader. Um, only the one of them it, it did a lot of damage. Uh, and I was really good. I just couldn't believe how, like, because, like, the uh, what, high velocity, so you can't dodge. And yeah. then um, Sharpshooter 1. Yeah, and Pierce 1. And Pierce They're 1. ridiculous. And then uh, the last game I played, a gentleman had an ATST bikes and then two sets of full snipers along with some of the troops. Yeah. And those snipers were just, like, he was rolling hot. Yeah. You know, I felt bad the first time he rolls, like, two blanks, re-roll into two blanks. And I'm like, oh, jackpot. Maybe I got this. But then those were, like, hit, crit, hit, crit, hit, crit. And then... Uh, you know, it was just like, I got to keep rolling. Like, it was nuts. Right. Like, how much do you just look at something and remove it? Yeah, and I'd say, uh, so the commando snipers, from just from a gun perspective, not none of their, any of their other stats, mm-hmm. but just a gun perspective, are running the one, the white and the black. Correct, yep. And then the the uh, Empire Scouts are running black, black. black. Yep. And I just think it, it just makes all the difference. It does. Uh, I mean, the uh, Rebel Surge. Uh, yep. which the Empire doesn't, but you have a chance to just roll better with the Empire. Yep. Like That's kind of the, the thing. Um, uh, Empire only surges on defense. We're a rebel surge on both. Right. Um, but Empire's gun is too black a unit for a little uh, holdout blaster. Yeah, and I can, so I played a game uh, yesterday with them, and I can tell you those are nasty. Yeah, it could be like 10 dice. Yeah, you throw on somebody ten black dice. Ten, like. ten black dice. It you just shred if yeah. you can get them up there. And you know, listen, they got the white defense dice with it. I know the rebels are yeah. all going, oh, you know, like white yeah. defense <laughs> dice. Blah, I don't blah, blah. actually. I don't. No, we don't. That's why we play <laughs> Empire. Yeah, like we're so used to red, and so that's like a little tricky. Like yesterday when I was playing, um, I definitely put my scouts in predicaments. I shouldn't have just because I was so used to red yeah. defense dice. Where I'm like, ah, do you run duck and cover on them? I don't. Um, I th- I think it's okay, but it's uh, I don't want them to be suppressed. Be- yeah. half the time, you know, and I get why you would want them to be, but I I want to be able to to use them. From, That's fair. Yeah, because they have the two, and then you're getting shot at anyway, so you're going to sure. be suppressed. But it gives you from armor nothing to armor two. I mean, a cover nothing from, to cover two. Yeah, I mean, it's nice uh, for the snipers by themselves. Like yeah. for instance. I could see using it like if you can't find a board placement where they make sense. Like yeah. if you're, let's say you're red uh, and you just got the crap board yeah. and there's nowhere to put them, then yeah, duck and cover would be really nice. But, you know, if you can find cover too on the board, which most boards you can, yeah. and you just place them there, like you, you mm. don't really need that duck and cover. That's fair. Um, yeah, so I guess, Evan, we'll, I know you went over your list a little bit, but why don't we talk about, uh, you know... Talk about the new troops that you played. What you know, kind of how they performed okay. for you. Um, so I just love I love uh, the DLT. It's just such a reliably accurate gun. Um, so I just made four troops that because I wanted everything I had on the board to be able to take an objective. Um, I built my deck around that. Well, as much as you can build it around anything, right? Uh, just all objectives. I took out breakthrough. I took out long march. Um, I just want my guys to be able to be all over the place. And be able to grab anything. Um, both at the first game didn't do much for me. Uh, the the guy was just rolling some great evade dice. It was insane. Uh, and so I was like, oh, wow, Boba kind of stinks. And then the second game, I, well, granted, the only leader he had was Vader. 
So the only option I had for the bounty was Vader, and I, for both was not killing Vader. Like it was like I put him on the episode of the board, I didn't really think about it, so yeah. was, that just wasn't happening. On um, the second game was uh, I put on Leia, and I got some really good hits. I hit her with a rocket, hit her with a carbine that dropped her, and then I got the. That's the only reason I won. Is I got that uh, bounty token. Yeah. And then so I had him kind of hidden in like a tower, and he was shooting out. So again, he was good, and he won me the game. But I'm like, I don't know about him yet. Then the last game, uh, it was uh, grab the supplies. Uh, or capture the supplies, and uh, he went around. He flanked all the way around to grab uh, the the other guy's um, team with him. Yeah. And I I was getting hit by an ATS, and every time I got shot, uh, surging on red defense dice is just so good. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like I took like one damage after like two full barrages, and uh, I had gotten melee with his guys, and I just kicked him to death because yep, he got the boot the spikes. Red, and then yeah. the last like it was one guy versus <clears throat> the game ended on a fifty fifty roll. Oh. So I I won because of it, but yeah. if he had survived. I wouldn't have been able to pick up the last supply token. And if he didn't, you know, like how it went. Right. So Boba just kicked Stormtrooper in the face and then grabbed the supplies. Yeah, I will say uh, yesterday playing Boba for the first time, those surges on red, I was, I, it was unbelievable to me. Like, yeah. I was just like, oh, feels great. oh boy. It feels great. Yeah, he is nasty. I took, uh, in the first game, I took like three damage right at the bat. I was three hits. And I just rolled three blanks. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Because he's got five <laughs> health, right? Yeah. But after that, after the second game where he just didn't get shot in the third game, I just felt like he was invincible, right? Yeah. But it's just like he, he, because he only got five health. So like he can just drop, like if things go bad. Like I had yeah. Vader off the bat take five health the second game. He just shot with a gun and yeah, broke blanks. I, I will say though, like right now, it seems like the, um, the Pierce is a big thing, you know, or get Pierce and Sharpshooter too. Yeah. If you use the, his carbine. And so, you know, but with Boba having that, that special ability to roll against uh the pierce impervious impervious yeah, yeah that that is impervious sick. x right it so is it's sick so if they have three pierce on you you roll three additional def- so luke or the vader comes up yep vader swings at him uh you get three additional dice so he still gets his pierce it's not negating pierce but it's giving you a chance to roll more shields to maybe not take as much damage uh yep. it's with snipers like it's pierce one so he gets an extra die like it's it's good it's real good yeah and it makes vader less scary for him to oh, you know yeah. like i think uh one of my matches somebody was playing boba and i i had th- uh vader throw his saber mm. and uh yeah he 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 just negated them all and it was yeah, just like he three didn't, he, yeah. didn't he uh uh the one gentleman you play at the end he evaded nine with boba yeah nine hits yeah he, yeah yeah he rolled so not nine hits but he had the six, yeah. He, I hit all six on Vader, oh. and he rolled the three extra for the Pierce three yeah. that Vader has, and he rolled all night, like all of them paint. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I remember we were playing. I heard this guy go, "Yes, yes, <laughs> nine of paint." Yeah, yes. and I was. I mean, listen. At that point, um, I had I, I had already had the game in the bag, and we were just playing it out. Yeah. But I was so happy for that guy too, because it was just I've never seen anything like that before in my <laughs> life. And I was just like, dude, congratulations. Like that's that is an incredible David, role. Like but just kicks the lightsaber out of his hands yeah. and all this, like not today. And he was just so happy. I just was like, Yeah, man. Yeah, like, he, you know, give him a high five. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was really funny. Yeah, like and I, I that I think that's the new like the thing with these new units I love so much too is it creates these little stories. Yeah, yeah. amazing situations and stories, like you said, that are just, just incredible and it's just fun, man. Yeah, yeah it's like a uh, bolt action, I feel like, has those great little stories where, like, one soldier behind enemy lines yeah. getting shot at, but he's just not going down, right? right. Like, now you can... Well, lot of stuff like Boba Fett took on an entire uh, Stormtrooper assault squad and just kicked them to death. Yeah, and yeah, shoot yeah. them, just kicked them to death, and yeah. then took the box and left, right? Yeah, like, Vader fought fought or Vader fought Boba, and Boba stood his ground, and yeah, not right? a single yeah. thing touched him. And it was like, what? Um... So, what was the for you? What was the toughest list you you faced? Um, it was probably the last one. Uh, it was uh, I, again. I, I regret not knowing the gentleman's name. He was a super cool guy, and we kind of uh, hit it off after the game because he uh, played X Wing and he won like uh, store champ at Millennium a few years ago. And that's Millennium's a big deal for X Wing in the area because it draws most people. It draws like sixty some people to a store champ. Yeah. So that was really cool. Um, but he uh, he had like a full. Uh, Weiss ATST, a pair of bikes, Veers, um, two full sets of scout troopers with snipers, and then I think like four DLT troopers. And man, he was just killing me with that. I remember you looked over, 
And you're like, how you doing? And it was like round two, and I had lost two full squads. Oh, of, yeah, of yeah, storm yeah. Stormtroopers, and I'm like, not good. But like, I couldn't get a hit in. He was just mauling me. And yeah, then... I was... Yeah, so going in, uh, we were doing strength of schedule, and so they announced going into the last round that Evan was in first place at that point. Yeah. And so, you know, being that I'm friends with Evan, I was really excited for him. And so I think what was round two for you, or turn two for you, I'd like turn... Yeah. yeah I turned around, I'm like, hey, man, how's it going? You... He just gave me this this death like, look, and he's just like, nah, not th- good, man, not over. good. So, yeah. in, so in my head, I went back to my game, and I'm like, oh, man, that stinks. Like, I really wanted Evan to to do well. Yeah. And then I think I was still playing, and you guys were completely done, like, packed up. When I looked back, I'm like, Yeah, oh, the game lasted, no. like, 40 minutes. Yeah, or was, something that was, like, really, like, the quickest game. Yeah, I was like, oh, no, Evan. And I, like, I'm like, oh, man, did you lose? He's like, no, I won. Yeah. <laughs> I just... <laughs> it, it goes to show uh, playing the objective. Like, yeah. he was doing a great job just wiping me out. Um, and again, it went down to like, we each grabbed the two, right? And there's the one in the middle. And I committed my whole army to it. But that ATST was just removing armies. Like, yeah. Uh, the var- it's ATST can be a variance monster, right? Sometimes you throw nothing. Right. And you're like, well, great. And other times you just throw a lot. So I had to pull back. Uh, you know, I was like, I, everybody, I'm like, oh, back, back. We got to fall back. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, I got to take something from him because I wasn't letting him have that middle one either. Because sh- every time he got in there, I was shooting at it, or Veers was yep. shooting at it. And so I snuck, again, it was Boba Fett, snuck around and took one of his at the last minute. And uh, so he ended up getting that middle one, but it was three to two. Because uh, I stole his. Right. And that was, it was, and he's just like, you won. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, because I, I didn't really see a path to victory besides that. And it just came yeah. to the uh, red die, just didn't roll for him. And uh, yeah, it was nuts. It was like a really... But it was a good game because it could have really went either way. And if we had tied, he would have won because it goes to like points killed, right? And it was like my whole yeah. army. It was like things left on the board were like Veers with a box, a couple Stormtroopers, and then Boba Fett, right? He had, I barely killed anything of his. I just ended up uh, just getting real lucky near the end. Yeah, and that, you know, this is a good tip for like newer guys playing or if you've played any competitive games. And this is something I learned a long time ago playing Magic competitively <clears throat> is that it's never over. Until it's over. As long as you have one life left, right? Yeah. In magic, you're oh, still alive. Yeah. You're still alive. You're still alive. You can still do stuff like never give up and never like, you know, I think it would have been pretty easy for you when I saw what was happening to you in that second second turn or whatever yeah. that you could have mentally checked out. But yeah. like just being competitive in gaming, like if you, ju- you just go till the end until it's definitive that yeah. it's over because anything can happen, especially in dice rolls. Yeah, you know, it hurt. Like after that, I'm like, oh, dude, this is it, right? After I lost that, but I'm like, well, uh, it's objectives. So yeah. like, if I can get those, I might still have a chance. And then uh, Boba Fett did it. Like, yeah, well, know. yeah, and I, I think it says a lot like to you too because I know, you know, a lot of people would have gone into that with the knowledge that they were in first place like feeling a little cocky and maybe not playing it out as hard. And so, you know, that that's something to be said, I think, for anybody. Like when you're going in, like, <clears throat> especially in this game, don't take anything you know, I appreciate for granted. That. Yeah, I, I know. In next week, I've made my career on losing. So I, I try not <laughs> to get my, like, I've learned just to keep my hopes about, like, winning real yeah. real subdued. And normally, like, I, I'm going to uh, the Pro-Type Toronto League. Uh, for their X-Wing tournament, and they have last place trophies. And I'm yeah. actually Ontario's finest uh, for coming in last <laughs> last year. Uh, and, you know, I, so I walk into mostly tournaments like, anything for last? Yeah. You know, I'm looking around, yeah. I'm like, oh, a Bigs card, okay. Uh, so I just, like, it always surprises me when I win. I'm like, oh, what, really? You know, I'm just like, yeah. uh, I'm just so prepared to, like, well, take that, that. I think that's a great attitude, because, like, I, I went in feeling super confident, because my, I mean, you know, like, I've been playing the list that I brought in yeah. for a few weeks, and I've just been doing really yeah. well with it. And then I just, I walked into Chris in that first round and he just, he taught me a very valuable lesson <laughs> and, and just smacked me down and was like, Mm-mm, how not, is this Han Solo? Uh, yeah. Ineffective. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, I mean, it, I don't, I can't tell you if it, if it's Han in general, the way he played him or our board state, but yeah, cause he, you said you started like pretty much opposite end. So Han's yeah, he, tough there. he didn't really get into it much. I think he shot me once or twice, but it okay. wasn't like. Um, the cards were more effective yeah. than he was, which I think is Han's deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was he was just okay. okay. But that's that's all I've seen. I haven't uh all the Hans I've faced so far, maybe four times. And uh yeah, he's I been, think when Chewie comes, yeah, it's gonna be like Han Chewy time. Yeah, Han, Chewie's got cards that work with Han, right? Yeah. Like it's super Han's cool. not a game changer on his own. Yeah. I, I agree. Cause I I've, I've seen him and those cards are real good. Like uh, sorry about the mess where you gotta switch your cards out. Yep. When you need a real clutch card, like 
I think those are. I don't know, I got to see more. I got, I, I only really play Imperial. This is like the one game mm-hmm. that I've played that I don't buy in like two sides. I just like well, I'm just gonna buy Imperial, and it yeah. keeps it cheap for me. And it's a hobby that it's 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 a what I love about Legion. It's a sustainable second game. Yep. As well, like you can be your primary. You can buy all of everything if you want, and you can have a great time. But like a new troop of you know two troopers comes out, you buy two boxes, fifty bucks every two months, right? Right, and you're like, all right, and you build them and you do whatever you want with them. And that's pretty like reasonable right yeah. like uh yeah. i love shadespire but they're the new set night vault came out i'm sorry i love warhammer underworlds is the oh, key and then yeah. shadespire was the last season yeah night vaults the current season but they put out the new set so i got that and now this next weekend the next two sets are coming out and more cards and all the stuff and i'm like i love the game but i'm already like whoa 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 right, right? like i'm like i i part of me really wants all the new stuff I'm like yeah more content mm, 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 yeah. i'm like but the other side, I just like, can't keep up buying it. But so I don't like the Legion release schedule. Uh, can be frustrating sometimes. You're like, I just need some more stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. when the snipers came out for the rebels first, and the Empire didn't have them yet. I'm like, I don't know if I want to play for a while until I have like an answer. <laughs> yeah, right? It was like, tough. Yeah. Uh, but now that like everything, like it's, I just got to realize that you know it's okay, man. Like mm-hmm. you don't have to have everything right now. So yeah, and uh, yeah, I think it's frustrating from that standpoint, but it's nice from a monetary standpoint. Yeah, yeah, my wallet enjoys it. Yeah, well, and, and I like I've been. Uh, this is gonna sound traitorous, but like I've even been looking at some rebel list going. It's kind of nice. Like, yeah, that looks, that looks okay. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I see a lot of rebel lists, and I'm like, oh, I would have played it like this. In yeah, my head. and I'm like, well, if I buy enough, so I've been slowly buying like. Yeah, when I walk into a store and there's nothing I want, I've got some extra money. I'll just buy a thing of Rebel Troopers, and I'm like, well, it's twenty five bucks. That's, it's not throwaway money, but at least it's like, I uh, I can make a purchase and I'm not out like sixty dollars like a video game or something, yep. right? Like I feel like I, the the consumer in me is very happy that I purchase something. Yeah, and it, it's just gonna get better when the other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Out. Yeah. Uh, okay, so next we're gonna talk about uh, second place. Uh, that says first place, but that's wrong. Uh, it's second <laughs> place. Uh, Luke Cook. So, you know, I, I sent Luke some notes after after our game and asked him some questions. So basically, he ran uh, Veers with a Steam Leader. He ran four Stormtroopers with DLT-19s, uh, a set of Snow Troopers with a Flame Trooper, an extra Snow Trooper, Emergency Stims, and oh, Impact yeah. Grenades. That's a really sick unit. Yeah. Boba Fett with Hunter and Emergency Stims. Uh, scout troopers with the sniper and HQ uplink, and scout troopers with the sniper and HQ uplink. Um, he took all the named command cards for both Boba and Veers, uh, except for Veers. He said he replaced his two pip with push. Yeah, which I think is a good move. Yeah, he, he doesn't have any vehicles. vehicles. Yeah, right. Um, he said that for him, Boba was really the MVP. He said he changed the game because he's really versatile. Uh, and that he felt like he could do anything. Um, he said that the bounty did come into play for him as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because uh, even if uh, you don't pull it off, your opponent still has to be afraid that it could get pulled up. We were talking yeah. about this before, yeah, like that you might they're going to play your, conservative. If you, like, uh, Leia or one of those squishy commanders, yep. like, you don't want her to get too close to the action if Boba's around, because, like, he can dole out a lot of damage. Like, if you take one of those power turns with him, where you, like, rocket launch your carbine and if you're in that sweet range three mode like they eat both or even rocket wrist rocket and carbines four black dice because he's got arsenal two so you yeah. just like four damage and then yeah and his and his and his cards yeah 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 like and you can't or whip it so the cord so he immobilizes you shoots right. you and then runs yeah. away like it's really like again i don't think he's as much as i'm praising him um there's one game where like he, vader was the only guy and i'm like i'm not killing vader yeah, I'm not killing Vader. Like I had my Vader to go fight Vader, and I'm like, so he just kind of like hung around and shot troopers, and it was kind of like he's a really good anti-hero killer. But as like an infantry guy, you get that one flame projector, like yep. his flamethrower, and after that, I just like I, w- I want to keep him away from troops. Like yeah. I don't know, I don't want to get tied up. So it's it's a weird like he's interesting. He's seems really good, um, but I'm waiting for Chewie to come out to really give you that counterbalance of yep. like. Because right, because the other shoe hasn't fallen yet. It was like me complaining about snipers for rebels. Right, like I don't have that option. Yep. And rebels have three commanders right now, and Imperial only has two. But we got this great operative. Yep. Uh, but when Chewie comes out, like I, I want to play a Chewie Han team. Like I want to yeah. just go in like yeah, you I'm know, really crazy scoundrel like yes. shenanigans. So um, yeah, and it's excited for the emperor too to see how he yeah, he looks geez. ridiculous. Was I don't like even three know. Three red and three black or something. Yeah, but lightning. he's like, like two hundred and some odd points. Yeah, two hundred ten points. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you know, we're joking. Like uh, Vader 
him team and just like the pair of troops yeah. to fit it in. Yeah. But uh, like he, two of the guards there. He rolls like red evade dice. Yeah, I know. Like it's he's ridiculous. insane. Yeah. Like, but um, let's see. So then Luke also said the scouts did a lot of work for him. Uh, he said, you know, with the two black that he was putting out some crazy damage yeah. at range two. And then he was just pretty much feeding them uh, the aims from Veers so they could still oh, move and yeah. shoot, you know. Uh, and then he said key for him was also putting the HQ uplink on them. So then he mm-hmm. could he could just give them an order whenever he needed to. Uh, he said he faced two Empire squads and a Rebel squad. Uh, he said the scouts were able to kill Vader. When they got within the range too with the oh, ten black yeah, dice, yeah, yeah. which so I didn't even think just, about that. Just overwhelming. Yeah. yeah, and then Boba was able to get a bounty on uh, one of the matches, which is cool. Like you said, you got one match with the bounty. Yeah. as well. Um, he said the toughest list he faced was his fa- his father's, which is uh, Chris Cook again. He's the first guy I placed. Yeah. Or played, and he he just ran me over. And like Luke said, the same thing. There's just so many troops to worry about that can do so much yeah. damage on that list. Um, and again, Chris ran, he came in third, he ran Han, Leia, two Z6, two fleets, two full sniper squads, and then, a, and then just a regular sniper. Um, oh, and, oh, that's right. And he had a naked trooper squad, just a random trooper squad for grabbing objectives and oh, stuff. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was just, just naked. Yeah. Trooper. Why not? I mean, all that matters is that leader, right? The other guys are just there for hit points. Yeah. If you just want to grab, uh, like grab her like that. Yeah. And so they were playing. So, uh, you got pared down. Yes. So so going into the last round, we had three three and or two and O's, three two and O's. Yep. Uh, Chris and Luke played each other, and then you played. Uh, yeah, I forgot his name too. Maybe, yeah, uh, maybe apologies. Jim. I want to say it's Jim. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you're listening, sorry, man. <laughs> but uh, you know, and so Luke said he was able to use Boba to missile kill his lone sniper team. Uh, that <laughs> held the supply crate oh, man. to end the game. So that's, oh, man. it kind of came down to the end. Because I remember going over there. They were still playing after I had finished. And yeah, it was just like really intense father versus son. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it, it looked like fun. Um, and then he said, he, yeah, his name's Jim. Okay, great. We got it. Jim. All right, cool. You played Evan. That was cool. the last game. So, uh, you know, Luke said the same thing. He played that Jim guy with the ATST. Uh, he was worried about you know, when he went into the tournament that he didn't have enough impact when he faced something like that. Uh, and so he said he just ignored the ATST and focused on everything else. And he said the game, like you said, the, the game was a bloodbath. Like, oh, yeah. He, he just was... kept running over everything. No, yeah. Jim was, he was a real tough dude. So Shout he said, to you. yeah, <laughs> yeah. A, he said at the end, they both only had three units left and the ATST was wiping out squads uh and he said he was lucky to, he was able to kill off enough of his troops that he can overthrow the objectives yeah so uh you know luke thank you so much for for writing in and telling us all that information and congratulations on second place and chris on third and once again those guys were amazing um, oh yeah great time yeah Can't all the guys in buffalo yep. were amazing uh you know for us for people who don't know where we you know our area at all it's about a two hour drive for us to get out there well worth well worth the two hour yeah drive. man it was a blast like yeah. it was a you know, you think about other ways you have spent the day and like uh, getting to push around miniatures and hang out with some cool guys was like, yeah, bad. Place. Yeah. And the pl- and like I said, the place was super cool. Like, yeah, that's one of the few places where if I got to buy besides like a convention, yeah. I, I'd be OK with it because yeah, of all this stuff, like random stuff to look around at. Like it was insane. Yeah. Like but, they uh, had games on. They had like uh, football games on. They had uh, I guess it would have been college because it was Saturday. They had yeah, college you games just walk on. over and watch TV. Like, yeah, yeah it was really cool. Yeah. Um, it it was really, really neat. Uh, so, you know, thanks for everybody out there. That was a great time. Great hosts. It was amazing. Um, all right. So the next thing we're going to talk about uh, is terrain. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of start with the terrain we saw at this tournament. And then I think I'd just like to talk about terrain in general and the shift we're seeing um, as people start getting into this game and, and you know, the, the crafts people that are building this insane terrain. Um, so for those of you who are just listening and aren't watching us on YouTube, um, I have a bunch of pictures up. They, they're available on our podcast channel, uh, in a PDF. You can just download, I have like a companion thing that I have running in the background. Um, so you can download that and check it out. I, the astonishing thing to me, and I brought, I brought two of them, but was the number of ATATs. And yes, <laughs> you heard me. ATATs between the Disney popcorn buckets. Those are the ones I have. To the like power of the force, old Kenner, like uh, 
AT AT yeah, toy. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was every table I think <laughs> had an AT, uh, maybe except for one, yeah. had an AT AT on it, which was amazing. Um, my favorite board at the tournament there was a kind of like an indoor style table that had these giant trees and you guys oh, that was can, super cool yeah, yeah the one in the upper right yeah my only concern was the train looked ridiculous i didn't i didn't end up uh getting uh placed on that board for during the tournament but like uh i asked nick how it went because he played it with the with the speeders and he said it was fine but like there was this weird crazy piece of terrain that had like a tunnel underneath it and it like yeah, it was like a cool. mountain and then like a path yeah. up to the top like it was nuts so what did uh wh- which one was your favorite that you saw oh the hoth board yeah yeah, that was really cool. So it was actually like, you know, textured terrain. Um, the guys did like great job on all the terrain. You know, we we're kicking ourselves because they ran out of, we didn't know how many people were getting. Right. And so we were surprised to get that many. So we ran out of mats. So we're using just like blank cloth, like black cloth. <laughs> yeah. For some of it. Yeah. Or X Wing mats because it was just there to like, we, right, just three by three is really what you're looking for as a play space. Um, but to be fair, like, uh, uh, no, besides that, like we just didn't, we weren't prepared, right? Yeah. Like, because we, we, when we run a Legion up here, it's like four people, maybe six. Six, yeah. At yeah, the like most. it's, so yeah. we're not used to like that many. So, but no, it was uh, having all that, that terrain there was great. The Hoss was my favorite. Um, I really liked, uh, I don't know, man. It was just really good. The Endor one was great. Like, they did a really good yeah. job. Like, all stuff looks good. Yeah. And so basically, what had happened for everybody, uh, they asked, so the store didn't really have terrain. The store, and, and that's okay. Like the store wasn't yeah. ready for train games. So, you know, one of the organizers, Chris, just basically has said, hey, if you guys got terrain, bring it because we're going to need it. And so, you know, a bunch of us just brought buckets of terrain. Uh, this guy, Paul, he brought most of the Endor and the desert stuff. Um, Chris and Luke, I believe, brought the Hoth stuff. And then that other table I don't have a picture of, but that was pretty neat. Um, some of my favorite pieces were uh, on the Hoth one. Um, anybody who sees the picture, there's like uh, these two like semicircles next to the ATAT. That was basically like an old droid tank from like the Clone Wars that it he made it look like it had been there for like 50 years. It, I mean, that was really, really neat. Uh, yeah, it was just really cool. And I guess this opens up because right after we came home from this, um, LJ from the Las Vegas Open there, he he posted some terrain pictures that they're probably going to have at the vegas open yeah and the one he posted was like um it almost looked like a cityscape like from uh jetta or or tattooing oh, cool. yeah and it was like uh yeah like an urban it's going to be like an urban table I, you know it's you know, funny you mentioned that because i love infinity how you're actually fighting yes. in like a built city you're not like fighting so warhammer terrain is meant to look like garbage yeah like not like the train itself looks great like the buildings and destroyed ruins and like Everything, but it's made to look like that because everything 40k that's nice is probably blown up, right? Yeah, you didn't mean garbage like people, yeah, like, no, not garbage like people. It's meant to look like it's so. Been all destroyed. you 40k guys, this is Evan Bullrich, <laughs> yeah, this is you his can address, find uh, him at- <laughs> uh, but um, uh, everything's meant to look like broken and destroyed, but yeah. in the Star Wars universe, like that's not the case, you right. know, like there's there's nice parts of the Star Wars universe, like I'd love sure. a, a downtown Coruscant. Yeah. Fight, right. Like you're fighting through city streets and like maybe that's where like fleet troopers really shine because right. like you can just run up on somebody and be like, oh, bah, you know, here's 10 white dice. Like because yeah. the range won't matter as much and like snipers and towers and stuff would be really cool. So I think that's really interesting about Legion is like even like small terrain, like getting an ATST stuck through a city block, you know, it can't like it has to actually back up. Yeah. Right. Like that'd be really cool. Like so to actually build like a straight city and have like, you know, neon signs and like all this little stuff like. Or downtown Tatooine, people do that a lot, and that's really cool. Like you're just in the, the you know cantina area, mm-hmm. and like I'm looking for more of that. I think that's the next thing that would really blow me away. Yeah, is open space and stuff like that is great because that this is the best drain I've ever played on for like war, yeah. for like a game so, like that. So let me ask you this really quick. So you were at Nova Open. Uh, the terrain is the same because we did a quarter of the table. Yeah, but it, from the images I saw, it looks like they didn't have a lot of height on them. Where... It, no, so the problem with the Nova terrain was just straight from FFG, so it's not anybody yep. at Nova's fault. No, nope. let's get that yep. out of the way. Um, and they just give you a bucket. And what's nice about the sheet is there's no arguing over. In each bucket, there's a sheet, and it tells you what terrain is. Like this is heavy terrain. This is yep. obscuring terrain. So there's no like, oh, we played it like this, or we played it like that. So you just look at the sheet. Um, but it, the problem was it did fill the space. But um, do you see like um, 
I know anybody listening to this, I'll have to describe it. I was going to point at a picture yeah. on the wall here. Uh, like you He's see making this, all kinds of hand you see gestures. this over here? Podcast, um, there would be like a little, like, little bit of a hill, but it would be a big hill. And infantry could like see over it and shoot over it. So it wasn't really doing much for you. This, it, was, but, at, this was at Nova. Yeah, but yeah. it would fill up those, the required spaces, like a big piece of space. So some of the open snow terrain would just murder for rebels. Like, yeah. no terrain is really bad for Rebels. Right. Like, you need it. So, uh, there's just some... I think, after a year, this is, like, Fantasy Flight's first major miniature game with, like, real terrain. Not mm-hmm. uh, So, Rune Wars exists, but they use, like, cardboard, like, to represent trees and things like yep. that. Like, not like this, though. Right. So, I feel yeah. like uh, the more they do, the more they'll learn. Um, but, to be fair, like, every map on Nova had a broken ATSD. Which was pretty cool. Yeah. Like it just broken down one. But like it was really some of the matches some of the levels felt real open and other ones were like you're fighting in like a plateau area. So there's giant plateaus that you can't they're higher than one. So you can't get around them, so you gotta fight around them. That was really cool. I just yeah. felt like uh not all the buckets were made equal. Like some train was really cool and some yeah. was a little rough. I mean I play Imperial, so like train or not, I don't mind. Yeah, and I'll say, you know, uh, for those of you that will be able to see the pictures, you'll see. But, like, I felt every table at this tournament was even. And they were diverse, and everything was different. And, like, some of, some of the tables were meant to be together. Like, people brought from home, and, were, yeah. you know, they, they clearly spent tons and tons of time on this. Yeah. Um, and then, like, if you're looking at the picture, like, on the bottom right, um, this was some of my terrain and some of other people's terrain. And so... It it was just a bunch of stuff, but it looked really awesome. Like it ended yeah. up coming out awesome. Um, and then just to back up a little bit, so Evan mentioned uh, Infinity, which for anybody who doesn't know, it's it's a tabletop war game similar. Uh, you you don't usually it's not um, exactly like Star Wars uh, Legion, but it's similar enough. It's yeah, like a mix yeah. between Legion Small and excursion, forty like k, yeah, than small Legion, but still still there with like mechs and robots yeah, yeah, and all yeah, kinds yeah. of crazy stuff. It's like a futuristic one. I will say, uh, just to the reason I'm bringing it up is I played that game, and so a lot of the MDF laser cut terrain that I use now for for Legion was actually from Infinity. And it fits perfect yeah. because it's futuristic. They have some beat down stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, like you can find a, a Warsenal is a great website for this stuff. Um, you know, some of it's a little pricey because it's a lot of laser cut wood. But, you know, some of the cheaper stuff is really, really nice. Uh, and I recommend that if you're having trouble either building or finding terrain. They're, they're really great. Um, but I'm I'm excited to see what terrain is coming coming next um what people are going to think of um you know we're it, it, i came away from this tournament um and actually if anybody's a subscriber on the youtube channel like i posted a, a terrain tutorial like, yeah, that was really cool after this for like a beat down atst because i it just was so inspiring um to see some of the stuff that these guys had done like paul and chris and luke and i was just like man these guys it just made me feel good about the game state in general. And I know yeah. this is going to sound weird, but, but it's just because the level of care and love, uh, I think that we all have for star Wars, but in particular that some of these guys have for this game just makes me feel really good moving forward. It feels good to find other passionate people about it. Yeah. Cause you spend so long, like trying to get people into it, like trying to you do demo games. And I get like, like not wanting to buy another, there are other people out there who will just play one miniature game and God bless them. Like, I just, I play so much that, right. like, you know, uh, people get sick of hearing me pitch a new game. Uh, but I just, I love it. I love all of them. But, yeah. so, like, it's, in our area, like, it's, um, Warhammer's really saturated. And that's fine, because you go to the store, and if you want to play Warhammer, there'll be a guy there. 13th Legion, um, they do a whole thing. They've got, like, 2,000 people. They're the yep. big thing in the Northeast here. Um, really good group of guys. Um, they love Warhammer. Um, but, like, Legion, like... You know, some of the the kickback he gets, like, well, there's not enough units, there's not enough sides. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, it'll come, right? Like, they just announced Clone Wars. And I got some of the guys that are like, oh, well, when Droidicus come out, I want to play. And I'm like, cool. Right. You know, like, uh, to me, I'm just thinking, well, I've got a big head start. You know, like all the games I've been playing, like, I'll get you. You know, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> uh, but I mean, I would, um, next army I'll buy, if they launch a Droidica army, I'll play a Droidica army. That just sounds wicked cool. Yeah. Um, but I think going up to back to terrain, um, besides, my point was, it's cool to find passionate people. Yes. That you're not, you don't feel like you're the only guys because people who are passionate about a game will usually group together and you might see the same people over and over again. But it's cool to like 
go somewhere else and feel like you're not alone. Yeah. Right? Like you're like, oh hey, there's thank God. You know, like yes. there's <laughs> there, you know, there's yeah. games alive somewhere else. But uh I think Fancy Flight can make some money if they go the games workshop route and release terrain. Sure. They're like, here's a wave of just like yeah. buildings. You buy well, them and you put them together. Right. Or give us the ATST, but it's like in the ground. Yeah. I th- like, because like you can go the into stuff uh, at Nova, right? Yeah. Look, like, look at Kill Team right now for 40K. They just keep releasing terrain. Right. And they release, you get a few troops, you get like a Kill Team, you get the terrain, and then you get some new rule cards and all that. But like, the terrain's worth it for a lot of that. Yeah. You're like, I look at all this cool stuff and I'm like, I bought the Kill Team box because it came with a broken down cathedral city. You could use that for this. It's about sure. the right size, but I mean, like, if if uh, Fantasy Flight uh, w- wants to invest more, and they're listening to the podcast, um, <laughs> they're if, not. if they, yeah, <laughs> they're not. They're, don't worry, they're not. They've actually no. <laughs> yeah, they've actually sent us emails. Yeah, they've specifically <laughs> told us they're not. Um, but releasing like, um, you know, those are homemade uh, hyper laser or turbo laser towers. Like, yeah, that's releasing a like a two set yeah. for like mm-hmm. thirty bucks. You build them and you or like because awesome. they make the barricades, yep. so it's like. The, they're not unwilling, uh, right? Because they gave you something out of the box, which is cool. But I'd love to walk in and be like, "Oh, hey, here's um, for if they even said like hundred dollars for enough legal terrain to plan a table." So you buy this box, sure. you build it, and it fits that twenty five percent, and it looks cool. And yeah. they can even match the mats, yeah. Because uh, the the actual two legion mats again still on terrain here. Um, I don't super love. I bought them. I'm I had them. Yep, yeah, I bought me them. too. Uh, yeah, I think they're a little busy um yeah because some of the stuff you would put like like th- if it's fine uh but like you're saying if they built the terrain that matched the picture on there that you, would be that'd awesome be, that'd be in right because there's yeah. like broken ats too so your guys are running over this like but you've got to realize right like <laughs> right. it doesn't like that that, that kind of bothers me a little bit but uh uh like uh, fantasy flight puts out just a green mat for uh rune wars just a grass mat it's the best grass mat i've seen it's a three by three i use it for a miniature game called test of honor um, which is perfect for like a Japanese town kind of feel. But um, if they did an Endor, they sold trees. Yeah. Like your trees look great. Those nunchucks you bought and like, cut oh, up yeah, and like yeah, they yeah. look really good. But I just feel like if they, because I bought the, the, um, the, uh, the expanded objective box, right? Yeah. Like the, yep. the little boxes that adds a lot to have yeah. like moisture evaporators Absolutely. and like communication centers. I'm just thinking if they released that, like I'd pay if they had like a hundred dollars for the Hoth themed collection where you get like, the shield generator and you get the turrets and you yep. get a uh, broken machinery and like yeah are you kidding me if they release snow mats and then that right I'd just be take so all hard. my like, money yeah, yeah 150 bucks for all the mats on the table yep to get a complete table like you can't you know that'd be crazy yeah okay so we're gonna move on to a segment now generally i have music and a whole thing but in respect to nick not being here we're just gonna move right into it that's fair kind of sad the next segment is called We're Doing It Wrong. Sad trombone. Uh, yeah, Nick loves that music and the sound that I make. Yeah. And I'm shaking my head now. He hates it. So <laughs> I only do it when he's here because it's funny. Uh, so this isn't really We're Doing It Wrong, but just stuff um, that we've been seeing that we want to point out um, just so everybody knows. Uh, one of the things, and this one's from Nick, uh, that came up. So the question was, when does su- suppression stop you from making your second action? So when does suppression slow you down? And, it and meets, the answer uh, is... It stops you when it, me- it meets your unit's courage value, right. the yellow number. So the problem is, is the easy way, the reason why a lot of people get it mixed up is most units' courage value is one, yep. like all the troopers. So as soon as you get one suppression, you're already, that's it. Uh, but for like Boba Fett or Veers or Han or anybody, it's two or higher. Yeah. So they don't actually lose your action until you've got enough suppression to equal that number. Yep. And then you don't panic until you have double. Double that, yeah. Yeah. And then you only panic uh, if you're not using your commander's courage. Uh, oh, that's a good point. So, correct. Yeah. So, um, if uh, Vader... The problem is when you play Vader, <laughs> like a lot of these rules don't apply to you. So, yep. it's easy to when you don't play Vader to, to not remember how to use them right um because vader doesn't even get suppression tokens he just yep. doesn't care but let's say here you're not playing vader for whatever reason i guess um so with veers uh, i think his courage is four something like that yeah, it was well, two and then you double it to be four right. for panic for, for panic yep. um so they can use his they still get suppressed at one but they don't panic until four right um that's also weird like it's easy to forget uh yep. 
Because like you gotta like when I watch suppression, I sometimes I'll be thinking I'm like, hey, could you check your command range there? And you go, oh crap, you know I got yeah. I've got two on me. I gotta panic now. I'm like, yeah, excellent. Right? Yeah. Uh, but then I also think of that too. I'm like, I gotta run my guy back into Vader's command range because oh gosh, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you know this isn't once again this wasn't a we're doing it wrong, but it's just some of this stuff is stuff we run into because the game's been out for a little while now. And as we play, uh, situations that we read about in the book when we first started playing yeah. are popping up now. And, you know, we may not remember those rules. And so these are just, I'm just doing some reminders. Um, the next one is, can you uh, grab two objectives and recover the supplies with one unit? And the answer is yes. Um, there is no rule that says one unit cannot grab two supplies. The rule just specifies that the supplies can't overlap with anything else and it has to be in base contact with your unit leader and it, it just can't be uh, impend- you know, impeding any other mini. Yeah. That's it. So, uh, Jim, if you're listening, <laughs> I'm real sorry. Uh, <laughs> because the way we always played it in my... Like when we played locally, was yeah. we always thought it was one per dude. Right. And when I went to Nova, the other guy I played also believed that where it was one per dude. Uh, and you went to move up with one guy already having one. And I'm like, oh, sorry, you can't. I let him, yeah, I think we took the move back or something. Like we, right. you know, unplayed it. But I'm like, no, it's only one per guy. And then uh, I actually just was reading Facebook on like the Legion main group. And then it was like, how, you know, somebody posted on this. Like, oh, it's as many as you want. I'm like, oh, no. I read it like Monday. So I felt, yeah. I felt real bad because I may have denied him the game there. Not, I was following that rule too. To be fair, I wasn't sure. like holding more. Than right, you not. could have gotten more with Boba if you wanted. Yeah, so it yeah. was. Um, but I felt real bad about it after the fact because I didn't, I didn't know at the time. Yeah, it, guys, I mean, this is just stuff we're gonna. And I know, you know, a lot of the super competitive guys that are trying to get their Indepticon, uh invites, you know, are gonna yell at us and say, "Well, yeah, that's the rules," and we know. But you know, a lot of us are still learning the game at the same time as everyone else, and so you know, these are just the pitfalls we're gonna run into. Um, you know, another one, uh, that came up as well for me. And I, I just, it's just one of those things. I wasn't playing it wrong. I just didn't really think about it is that for your mini not to be shot, they have to be completely covered by terrain, completely blocked from line of sight. Yeah. And so like, even if their little gun is popping out they're they're within line of sight. So you can shoot at them. They'll still get their, you know, they'll still get their, um, uh, cover, but they could still be shot at. Yeah. So that's another thing. Always when you're placing minis, when you're thinking about Turn a move. Turn sideways, whatever you got to do to make sure they don't get seen. Get down there at eye level yeah. and just make sure you're in you're in good shape because, yeah, I've definitely... Because <laughs> I'll be looking at eye level to shoot at it, right? Like, yeah. So uh, I did the same thing uh, when we used to play. Like, we thought it had to be... It was like if 50% of the model's covered, it's considered heavy. Yeah. Um, But I thought, like, it was just like a head. Like, I was playing with Nick back at... The store tournament we played, I don't know, months ago at this point. And he's like, can Leia shoot Veers? And was this both their heads looking? And I'm like, I don't think so. Like, I, right. And he's like, all right. He still just demolished me anyway. But yeah. uh, it was like, a, so that, it's a good point. So as long as there's any part of the plastic looking at any part of the plastic, it's... Considered line it's of sight. Because it's, this game is a, a true line of sight. Like, no, Correct. like, you sees it or it doesn't. Yep. Yep. Okay. And so just the last thing for today is uh just a reminder for everyone uh this is the last week for the giveaway so uh i'm sure you've heard about this it's the great fifth trooper giveaway we're giving away a unopened completely sealed right here in front of me box and for those of you listening you don't get this but i'm pointing at the box so go check out the youtube channel (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's my new sound effects generator <laughs> uh so we're giving away a brand new box of rebel commandos i'll ship it anywhere i don't care uh but we are asking something from you you know we're trying to grow the podcast as i'm sure you gathered we want more listeners we want everybody listening and liking us and you know because we love it when people like us um so to to you can get multiple entries for the giveaway you know you can uh there's a little form uh, on our podcast webpage under the giveaway tab. And there's like a little, you know, I'm sure you've seen them across the internet now, like, like our Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube channel, rate us on iTunes, follow us on Twitter. Uh, and all these things will get you entries into 
the um into the giveaway and then uh i believe it's saturday saturday it's it's a software program that i'm running that's gonna pick the winner so please don't suck up to me no (laughs) no go ahead suck up to me yeah 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 you'll you'll get priority you'll get a mister you'll get another wish i had a box of legion (laughs) you'll you'll get another entry for any any kind of good comments no but listen, we, we're just happy that you guys are listening. I wanted to give something away to our listeners for, for just being there for us. And, you know, we both win, right? We get our likes, we get our subscribers, more people get to hear us. That means that you get to hear us more because, you know, the more people that are subscribing and liking us and rating us on iTunes, just the better it is for us. And the, and the more we'll be able to produce the content that we're producing um, and then, you know, you'll get a giveaway at the end. Uh, one of you will. And, you know, this is something I plan on doing again, and it's been going well so far. And, you know, so, you know, thanks for, for those who have signed up. And if you haven't yet, you got uh, till Saturday to do it. So, cool. yeah, so do it. Um, well, that's going to do it for us uh, this week. Once again, I want to thank Evan for, for joining us. Uh, he was going to be here anyways. And then, Fair. yeah, Nick had some uh, some issues, so he couldn't make it. But uh Actually, uh, Nick's quitting Legion. No, I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> he said he said he's uh, just playing X Wing. Comes out, yeah, right, Keith right, Law. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but thanks, Evan, for joining us, and uh, thanks everybody out there for listening, and and have a great week, and we'll we'll see you next week. Have a good one, everyone. Stay right. Join us next week for another edition of the Fifth Trooper Podcast.